Hello there and welcome to my arty channel here on YouTube and I'd like to thank you for joining me and I hope that you'll enjoy this video today which is the second part of the one my previous video. So in my previous video I drew this design today I want to add some colour and um, get some shading into it hopefully. I have a feeling I may mess this up though but we're going to go with it and see where it goes. So as I'm filming this, it's Wednesday the 17th of August 2022 and it is just after 10 o'clock in the morning and it is lovely and cool. It's absolutely delicious. There's a breeze, it's 18 degrees Celsius. We have got thunderstorms and heavy rain warnings again for today. Did have a bit of thunder yesterday, a bit of rain overnight. Not enough to really feed the ground water and plants, well the plants would have a tiny bit of drink because it was gentle rain but there we are. So before I start, thank you if you've subscribed. I really mean that. Um, thank you so much and if you've given a thumbs up for the videos, a huge thank you as well. Any of my videos, but a huge thank you. All it does is by subscribing and putting thumbs up, it helps other people who might be interested in what I do and how I do it um, get recommended the videos. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. It's completely free, totally free, doesn't cost you anything. And if you enjoy the videos, remember to give a thumbs up. That would be fantastic. Thank you so much. Right, no further ado. So you can see peeking out from underneath this, I have got here um, some test paper where I've put the colours I want to use. Now these are, our, I'm going to be using Arteza Everblend markers. They've got a bullet tip, which I prefer to a brush tip. Um, I get more control over it, I guess, uh, more than anything else. But these are from the Architectural and Greys sets, not the main 144 set, because I've got, I quite like the more muted, softer colours, which is surprising giving this. But I think these might work. I'm worried about this for petals, but it may end up this becomes the petal colour. In fact, I may do that. So I'm going to have a look at this and see where I go a little bit at a time and see where we end up. Um, actually, I th actually, I think that was the colour I wanted to use around here. I'm going to need some darker colours though, I think. I think the petals I'm going to do blue. So I'm going to start with that. So I'm going to start with one one flower. Hopefully you'll see. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start and because it's still quite warm and I've got a lovely breeze coming in the windows, the markers may dry a little bit too quickly for me to get a really good blend. We'll see. So I'm going to do my best to saturate or mostly saturate the um, paper. This one is it's called powder blue, so it's a nice light blue. The second colour is called ocean blue and it's a bit darker and it looks quite a lot darker. But alcohol markers have a tendency to do that while they are um, still wet. So while the paper is still wet with alcohol marker, I'm just going to blend that edge out a little bit just to make it that little bit more um, softer edge where they meet and the last blue I'm going to use is called stone blue and it is quite dark so I'm going to use it quite sparingly and I'm going to dot it around here which is where I'll want the darkest area to be so I'm blending that dark blue out with the mid blue and then I'll just blend the edge of that mid blue out again with my lightest colour now these ideas kind of work for any medium you'd like to use. Um, in terms of where I'm putting the dark and light colour. It depends what medium you use, whether you start with a dark colour, a light colour, a dark colour, medium colour, whichever you prefer. I mean, you know, um, I'm no expert colourist. I'm not really. <laughs> I, I do tell you this. But I take quite a simple approach to adding shadow and highlight. So, oops. Oh, I want the mid one. Problem is, it's keeping track of which is which here. 
because the lightest one will blend the darker one in with the medium one, but it will also bleach the colours that little bit. And I don't want the colours to bleach. So, and I find that by doing it petal by petal, it might be a bit on the fussier side, but the alcohol marker doesn't get that much of a chance to dry. But I don't think it dries all that quickly on the on marker paper. That's the, the point of marker paper is that it prevents a quick drying, possibly. But perhaps I'll do two petals at once just to see. And I think I will go to the dark, not the dark side, I don't go to the dark side. Back to the medium. And here I think I'll need just a little bit more of that medium colour just to blend out, around the edge, just to dampen that colour down again as well. And then I'll use the lightest colour back and forth with a kind of circularish motion but I'm happy to leave the more feathery edges of these as they are rather than getting a perfect smooth blend. So that's my first flower. Now then for the others I'm going to have to be a little bit on the mindful side and I'll show you what I mean with one because I'm not going to colour all of these on camera today. Um, that would take me a lot of time because I do fuss around with this. So I'm going to give you enough examples here that you can follow what I do, I suppose, um, or use it. So what I'm doing here underneath this petal, because it's overlapping, I'm going to add some darker colour there. And I'm also going to add a hint of this darkest colour. And I am literally just dotting it along the edge because I know I'm going to come back and use this medium tone just to feather that edge out a little bit, just to help it blend in. And then the lightest tone to go back and blend these out. I am using monochrome colours for the different areas because I just find it a lot easier to get decent results from, to be honest. But feel free to use different colours, like a medium tone, a light tone, a dark tone. Because these drawings are quite small, you don't really need to use uh, you know, five or six colours to get a good blend across. If you were doing a much bigger drawing, it would be different. But I guess if you've got very sharp pencil points, then you could do that. Um, but it's not me. All about fairly simple colors, I think. There is definitely a whimsicalness about me and a very stylized kind of way I like to do my art. I will experiment with other things and see what happens. Oh, that's the lightest one. I didn't want to use the lightest one because it will bleach those colors. So I just need to go back and add some of that darker color again. As you can see, it's been bleached out. Pesky me not paying attention to which pen I'm picking up but it's fine that's better and then just use the lightest shade just to blend them out and if I wanted to leave a, a lighter area around the edge of the petal I just wouldn't color up right to the edge but I'm not being too fussy if there's a little bit of lightness there so that automatically Puts, helps to put this one beneath that one. I'll do it again with the next flower I'm going to colour in, which is this one. So again, I'm using the lightest colour to fill in the whole petal. 
then the medium colour to fill in, well, a little bit over a half. But I'm also putting this medium colour around this edge as well to give that shadow that I'm looking for. Then I'm going to come back and I'm going to add this darkest colour along that edge where they overlap as well. And then I'm going to go back to the medium and blend just the edge of this out. I don't want to blend it all out. And then here, just blend the edge. And then I'll do round the other side, this other part here, just to show you again. So I'm filling all of that petal there and I'll do this one at the same time because there's a new little petal. Let's see if I can do three at the same time, is it? Because the swapping over, swapping back and forth of pens does take that little bit of time and it gets a bit frustrating for me at times. I can get frustrated with changing pen tools and goodness knows what when I'm working digitally, to be honest. So there's the medium tone going down. Then I'll come back with the darker tone. By putting the, the light and medium tones, the light tone and the medium tone and the dark tone down, what you're actually doing is adding enough alcohol ink so there's sort of like a layer of solvent there, whatever the, the dyes um, the coloured dyes in the alcohol ink are, are dissolved in. There's a layer of that on the paper. And that really does just make it that much easier to blend things out. And they automatically sort of spread a little bit one into another. But you do need to come back and give the edges a little bit of love and help to do that. So there we are, I've got three flowers done said I will finish these off away from the screen so if I pop my blues out the way so I don't get confused now then the yellows I've got three yellow well I've got two yellows here I've also got a beige which will work for a shadow for these I've got citrine yellow which I think I need to open the right end. I think that's the lightest colour, even though it doesn't look it. I've got chiffon, which actually is the lightest, even though it is bonkers. And I've got beige as the darker colour that will give just a bit of shadow. So um, it's a brownie colour. So if I put these in order of use over here. So I'm just going to start with the centre of these. colour it all in this is the lightest yellow and yep I'm going to do another another couple while I'm at it because these won't take me long to do because they're not very big areas so that was the um, the chiffon yellow obviously if you're going to be using other mar alcohol markers or other kinds of um, colouring media colouring tools um, then you know, just bear in mind, it's a, always a dark, medium and light. So if there's one called chiffon in the set of markers that you've got and you want to use. It may not be the same colour as this, unless it's the Artezas. But this one, I didn't put any shadow there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this beige to just come around and pop some extra shadows in, especially where these overlap. A little bit round the edge, I think. Now where they overlap, because this is not really that much different in colour or tone, I'm actually going to leave it as it is. Just going to use the lighter colour just to bring the highlight back. And perhaps help to bleach out some of the outer bits. And that should do for this, right? So if I pop these to one side, I've got that one. So that that's a clue as to how this is going to work. So that's the yellows and the blues done. In fact, I'm going to move them completely off my desk before I scatter them far and wide. 
which would be a very silly thing to do. So these sections here, I do want to use greens and I've got three greens here. And you can see the greens. I've got three greens. I've got a light green, a medium green and a dark green. And for these, I really only want to use the light green. And I think I'm going to use the light green round this ring, but I'm not sure. So let me start with one at the top. Again, it doesn't look particularly like it's a very light green, but it does dry lighter. And um, what was that one called? That one was called Parakeet Green. This one is Green Pickle. And then the third one is actually um, Basil Green. So I'm just using, again, the lightest tone just to fade it out. And I do think I might need just a dot of this darkest green here, just to get that darkness in, to suggest this really is just tipping that little bit underneath. underneath. And if I want, you know, a little bit more of that curve, I can just add little dots of a darker green. Yeah, I've used the basil green, which was very silly. But just a little bit of darker green at the edge and leaving this green here for the highlights, the lightest green. So I'll do that again. It's not easy to see and at the moment everything looks the same green. Let me see if I zoom in, hopefully. So I'm going to colour these sections here with the lightest green. It's not a very light green but it's light enough for me. Then I'm going to use the medium green and I'm going to leave a little highlight. So I want a little bit of the medium green at the bottom and a bit more at the top I think. So if you can see that. Then I'm going to put little just a little dot or two of the darkest green at the top and right at the edge back to the medium green so I'm going to just go over the top of that darkest green and the edge of it just to get it to blend in and now I use my lightest colour just to blend it all like so and as it dries it's a very subtle kind of gradient, but I know I can put highlights in with something like a, um, what do you call it, a gel pen. There we are, we're back to that. Okay, I'll just do a couple more. And because these are such small areas to do, I think I can most probably do quite a few in one go before I run the risk of them drying up. I've got the right one here. Because it really does look quite dark in comparison. There are little places where I've spilled out of the um, oop, lines a little bit. But I'm not really too worried about that can always come back with the blues and like there's a little bit there. Always come back with a blue and, and sort of disguise that if I want to. Oh, I'm doing the wrong one. This is the problem is I forget which I've done and which I haven't. But it's okay, we're, we're fine now. We're on track. To be honest with you, this one, it won't make too much difference there. Of course, part of this is because I'm chopsing rather than paying attention to what I'm doing. Or full attention. I have to be aware that I don't let something slip out of my mouth that shouldn't be heard. But there we are. So, very dark green. But I think it will work in, in the long run. Very muted colours. Um, but that sort of suits me as well. Okay, these bigger leaves. So, while I've got the green out... I'm going to fill in 
these outer rims first, you know, the outer edges. I could have done with a lighter green. I could have fertled through my full set, um, but it is what it is. And so I'm just going to put some of the darker green, or the medium green, just a little bit more than halfway up. And then I'm going to add about half of that distance in the medium in the darkest green. So then I come back and I'll blend that edge out. Move that to the edge again so it's nice and damp ready for the lighter green. And in this case I am going to leave my lighter green. I'm not going to take it all to the end. I'm going to leave it there because when you put alcohol marker on top of alcohol marker it's glazing and you can intensify the colour that way if you wish. So that's quite nice. Now then, here I am going to pop light green in here and I am going to work these sections one at a time because I'm not quite sure how I want to do this. So here I'm going to put shadow under here and I am going to leave a tiny highlight there to suggest there's light coming through or this is the highest part. Okay, so I've put dark shadow underneath here, the darkest colour under here with the medium next to it and then the light area. I also want to put, and if I do the dark colour first this time, I want to put the darkest colour here here and here and I want to go over here and here and here and do the same on this side then I'm going to come along and I'm going to go over this with the medium I'm doing it this way so perhaps you get a better idea of kind of what I'm doing the proportions and what have you so this is the lightest colour which I'm going to use all along here to um, try to blend these out. Oops, went over into one of the petals there. But um, that will, when the blue comes in, that will disappear with the lightest colour, it will bleach it. So not as much contrast as I'd like there, but the magic of gel pens will work. So let's have a look at doing this on another leaf. I'm beginning to regret these colours, I hope you know that. But I guess it's the methodology or the thinking that's the important thing here. I always say, don't follow me in the realm in using colours or choosing colours. I'm not very good at putting colours together which is daft really, but you know, that's me. So we've got that there. And perhaps with this one, I'll do what I did with the other leaf and perhaps just put the darker colour in first, then the medium colour just to blend that out a bit. And finally, the lightest colour here to try to keep that nice and light. So here we'll do the same. So I'm putting the darkest colour around the edge here and underneath or, you know, next to where they're overlapping as if it's underneath, we're heading underneath that flower. Then I'm going to add my medium tone. And with this, I'm trying to feather the edge, but I'm also trying to blend the dark and that medium together and then I'm going to have a job to get this to blend. It's not the best way around of doing things actually. I think I've worked out what I need to do so I'll do one more leaf quickly for you. And it works. You can see as it dries the colours lighten and um, there is a, a difference in these. So if I do this one leaf. Now whether I get this done today I don't know because I've got, my mind is, I've got other things that I need to do here today. 
So it may be that um, I'll come back to this at some point um, over the next couple of days and show. And I'll post the finished result in the community tab, which I'll put a link to anyway when I do that so you can see it. But I do have other things that I need to do today. Um, you know, first Wednesday is usually my day to start drawing the colouring page, colouring template for um, the fan group um, on Facebook, colouring book fan book fan group. But I've given them a poll this week to see what they'd like. <laughs> and I thought, oh, I posted it fairly late yesterday, so I need to give them some time. So I think tomorrow's going to be my day for drawing and dealing with that. Um, so if you're watching this on Wednesday, <laughs> uh, Thursday, there won't be a video this week because that will, that's my priority um, on Thursdays. But that's pretty standard for me. Um, I do these weird things from time to time. It's always dangerous giving people choices because you think, oh, have I really got to draw one of them? At the moment, what seems to be winning is what I did last week, which was a collection of four small drawings, which has surprised me. Yeah, I have mandala, my doodle worlds, my typical entangled kind of art. But no, it seems they'd like four small drawings again, which is fine. It's fun to do. And they can be used as well in different ways, which might be the reason why they're asking for them. Yeah. Maybe card makers there or... People would like to use them in their bullet journals and what have you. So there we are. So what I did there was I left some of the paper or some of this section just plain paper so that that then would not be glazed over with the same colour. So when it dries, it should be lighter. So there's that. So again, I'm just going to pop these away, find the right lid for the right marker pop those over there and I do want to come back with the yellows because I do want to put a yellow around these and I'm going to use the dark I think this is the darker one I think I'm wrong though no, I am wrong this is the lighter of the two colors but it's okay because that'll work as well so I want the a slightly darker yellow and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pop it round the outside edge. This is tricky because there's not a lot of area here for this and I may just fill it up with this slightly darker colour. If that happens it happens it is what it is and I'll live with that. So I've got that there. So excuse my arm so what we need now is what to do about these bits around the outside. I'm not entirely sure I have colours that will be dark enough for this, to be honest. But let's have a look and see. I've got pearl, I've got sand dollar and I've got blush grey. So they are sort of like pinky brownie colours. The pearl is the lightest. So this is the one I'm going to start with. And I am going to fill the whole of these strips in with the pearl. Now these pearls that I've got here and the little hearts, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with those yet, whether I'm going to use some of these colours or not. Now sand dollar is the next darkest. So I'm going to think about where I want to leave a highlight and I'm going to use that sand dollar just to put the shadows in for now. And I do have these little areas where we've got a bit more in the way of, um, you know, where it looks like they fold. So what I'm doing there is I'm just dotting some of the colour down rather than trying to, to colour it in entirely. 
and I will use this colour just to blend it out but also to bleach some of it out so it's not quite so. But that's beginning to work, isn't it? And perhaps just two colours will do here. I might try some of the darker colour in a moment just in where things overlap. And here what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to colour along these sections in the direction that the the lines go because if any of the ink does streak with um, these alcohol markers it won't be noticeable so where the lines bow out here and here is going to be where the shadows are and where they go back inwards is where I'm going to sorry it's where the highlights are and where they sort of bow back inwards is where I'm going to put the shadows. And I need to put a bit where they overlap as well. Where things overlap. Of course I can always intensify shadows and so on with by adding some more of this colour. Which is what I'm going to do along the edges for a moment. So let's go back and just blend these edges a bit. Being careful not to overwork the pen lines just in case they shouldn't move because they've been drying for the day. But you just never ever know. So we've got those there. Now I am I'm sure this one is darker. Let me have a quick look. No, actually it's not. How bizarre. It looks like it should be darker, doesn't it? From the top. If I put the tops together. Do you think that would be darker than these? But it is a cooler colour. So I may just pop some here just to add some cool colour there. Just to cool the sand dollar down just that little bit where we've got the overlaps. Just to give that idea of a bit more of shadow. It's very subtle but it's there. So... I'll do another one, another area here. So I'm putting the lightest colour first. I can do this one as well. Then I'm coming back with the, the darker colour, which is actually quite a bit darker. Even when it dries, it's quite surprising. And along here, just along the edge there and there, I'm not going to get a highlight in there. Here I will though. So I can always go back and add more of the paler colour or the lighter colour if I need to be. Here I am going to dot along the middle with the lightest colour because it will bleach out the medium colour or the, the other colour. So I've got this in my hand. I'm going to go over these and then come back and add some Shadowing there, and then just a little bit of this. Not sure about those greens. I think the greens are perhaps the worst choice out of the lot. I'm quite happy with this, and I will come back with that darkest, or the, the, the cooler colour, just to add some of it where got overlaps or at the edges just to suggest that shadowing that actually works I think my thoughts were to actually use the um, lightest color for these I think I still probably could you have a look because what I want to do is to leave a bit of a highlight is where I need to blend a pen and I haven't got one but it may work out fine so if I leave a highlight but put some shadow round that little highlight can't fit a highlight in those but that just tones them down and tones them into that that actually works because even though I've got the highlights 
the lines separate the sections so it's easy to pick different things out. So at the moment this all looks a bit of a mishmash, doesn't it? Just a bit. But I actually think it'll work out fine. As I say, my only regret really is that I used um, that those greens, but I should have should have got up and got and looked in other collections of, of pens for different colours. But it is what it is. And it may, once everything's coloured in, look fine. But as I said, don't hold your breath. It may take me a number of days to finish this because I do get fed up with colouring quite quickly. I much prefer drawing. And when I've done that, I will post the results. But I hope this is enough for you to add colour to your drawing or how colour can be added to these patterns um, to get perhaps different effects and so on. I like the way the leaves are looking as if they're bulging up in the middle, as if that edge is sort of like underneath and supporting the plumptiousness in the middle. Um, I do think perhaps I could have used yellow instead of green between the flowers. I may try that in the other flowers because this is a kind of test piece now. Um, I do, I'm so glad I chose these colours because I actually really like them here. I do. So it's not all bad. It's just that green is just a bit in my face. But I'm going to leave it here for today. I'm going to say thank you for joining me. And I look forward to seeing you again. It's probably Friday. Oh no, because I'm, I'm away on Friday. I'll see if I can get a video done and ready to upload at some point. If not, it may be Saturday, but I know I've got a busy day Saturday. It's bonkers. The, this, the end of this week is absolutely bonkers for me, but we'll see what happens, okay? So take care until then. Bye-bye for now.